Hi guys, so I just wanted to go over the example for goal programming that we did in class on Wednesday, just so you can have something to go back to if you have any questions. So first, what we're gonna do is, I'll share my screen. <laughs> okay, so if you notice right here, here's our problem. So Mayor Dynamite wants to expand the Uncle Rico Convention Center in Franklin based upon the market research conducted by the firm of Kick Lafon. Kip LaFonda and Associates, Mary, Mayor Dynamite has five goals for the URCC. So here are the five goals right here. Um, so based on those goals, that's what we'll do our goal programming on. So um, under files, you should be able to find this if you don't have it still. Um, so right over here, we have our objective function. Given the constraints, Mayor Dynamite must decide how small, medium, and large firms to include in the R how many small, medium, and large firms to include in the URCC expansion project. Um, and something I like to do, um, of course, you don't have to if you don't want to, is I like to put what the first what the goals are for the specific pages. So for this first one, we're going to have our goal one to be spend less than a million dollars. All right. So what we're going to do first is set up our orange cells. So we'll go ahead and put them right here. So we'll start off with these three. Remember, we want to see how many small rooms, medium, and large rooms to put in. And so because this is a goal programming problem, we're going to have this cell under just be how many under we are. The second cell being how many over. And we will have these also be orange cells. Now we're also going to take into consideration what the square footage is and the overall cost for building. Now remember these are not variables because they depend on how many rooms and what the cost are, what the cost is. So we're not going to keep these orange make these orange, but we are gonna make these two bottom ones orange, right there. And we can go ahead and put in our formula for square feet and cost, which would be the sum product of our total number of rooms, so each small, medium, and large room, with this. And so we'll do the same thing for cost. And take the total, oops, well, sum product function. The number of each room times the cost for each. So if we go ahead and put one of each. Make this just into general numbers. And this one we can put into currency. All right, so what we'll do next is set up our French flag. And if you remember from class, our French flag is going to take the difference between the total and the amount under or over, and that'll be our blue, our blue section of our French flag. All right. Again, we will take the total plus how much we are under minus how much we are over. And this will equal what our desired amount will be. So in this case, it will equal the yellow cell here, the five. And this will be the same for all of them. And since we have the same um, formula for all of our blue cells, we can go ahead and drag it. But just remember, that you're taking into consideration what the amount under and over are. And this bottom section right here will again just equal your yellow cells. Oops, looks like I accidentally deleted what are 
There it is. So here's our approximations for square feet and cost. Sorry, I accidentally deleted it when I was playing around with it. So 25,000 and then a million dollars. Go ahead and make these yellow. All right, so for our square footage, we'll just have it be 25,000. There we go. And we'll go ahead and color these red. All right, so we have our French flag. So now what we're going to do, because of because remember goal programming is all about the percent deviation. So how much we change from our desired, um, the desired goal to the actual total. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the percent deviation and these cells are gonna be in purple. All right, go ahead and make these white. So this first cell is going to be under and over. Again, these are percent deviation. This is percent deviation. Okay. So in this first cell, what we're going to do is we're going to take the amount under divided by the desired amount right here. Okay. So you can go ahead and drag that out. And we're going to do the same thing with the over, but have it reference your over um, your orange cell for the over section divided by the desired amount. Change this to white. And then we'll go ahead and copy that over. Okay. All right, and then the second part that we're gonna include are weights. Because there are certain things within this model that are more important to us, then we will be able to weight specific things. And then we'll have under and over. And go ahead and color these yellow. So this is when, um, and then I'll go back to this in a second, but our green cell will be right down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the sum product of the percent deviation and the weights. The reason we do this is because if something isn't that important to us and it deviates a little bit, then it's not that big of a deal. Um, and we'll see in a second what that will look like once we actually solve the model. So we'll go ahead and put zeros. But change these percentages. And your yellow cells will just be normal numbers because you're just putting in the weights yourself. Oh my goodness. We'll go ahead and just copy these over. All right, so going into our first goal, this is what's most important to Mayor Dynamite. So for this first one, he wants to spend less than a million dollars. What that means is we're really going to put our weights based on what we wouldn't want to happen. So if we want to spend less than a million dollars, then we don't want to go over a million dollars. As a result, we're kind of putting a, we're making it, we're giving kind of a penalty if you go over. So we are gonna put a one right here. So what happens is any percent deviation here is going to multiply by this one and give us a higher green cell, which is not what we want. So with that in mind, we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and put it into solver. All right. So we'll go ahead and put our, set it all. So first we'll select our green cell. You guys know the drill. Minimize it because we're gonna minimize that percent deviation. We'll go ahead and include all of our orange cells here. 
Okay, we'll add our constraints. So first our blues. And then our reds. And then we're gonna actually, ugh, sorry, I can't speak today. We're gonna have um, an integer constraint for those rooms. Okay, so that's it with our model. We're also gonna make sure that it's simplex LP. And now we're gonna solve. Well, solver's gonna solve. <laughs> Okay, so if you notice what we're doing now is building 22 large rooms. We are under a million dollars by 6,700. So you see, even though we have a percent deviation here, it's not where that weight is. So it doesn't make a difference. We are also under on pretty much everything else, <laughs> except for our large rooms where we're over. Okay, so our percent deviation is right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this goal and add it to our second goal. So we're going to come in here and copy it. Okay, so here's our second goal. Um, and based on, so we can go ahead and change this to goal two. Based on the PowerPoint. Our second goal is he would prefer to have at least 15 large rooms. Okay, so what we're going to do first is because we are including our former model, we are actually going to include another restraint, constraint. So what we want is, remember we want to have our total cost be less than a million dollars, um, or at least no more than a million dollars. So what we're going to do is we're going to refer to our orange cell, what it was at the beginning, which is right over here. Um, at our over section for our orange cells. I keep on pointing to the screen as if you guys see me, but you don't. Um, well, you don't see me. Anyways. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and select this cell right here. So F11. Okay. So we're going to keep this as a constraint. We'll make this our blue cell. We're going to make that equal to zero. And this will be our red cell. All right, so we'll add that as constraint. We'll also change this weight right here to zero, since that's not in our second goal, and we kind of already have it incorporated right here. Um, so to have at least 15 large rooms, what we want to do is look at the under cell for our large rooms. So we are going to go into the corresponding cell. Go ahead and put a one there because that's taking into consideration that we don't want to go under 15 rooms. So that's all you have to change on that. We'll go back to solver and add a constraint. And solve. Okay, and surprise, it's the same answer as what we got before, which makes sense because we were already going over the desired number of uh, large rooms, the approximate desire, the, the target goal for the rooms. Okay, so we've done our second goal. What we'll do now is do our third goal. Maybe. Try that again. <laughs> Come on. Oh. <laughs> Forgot to press create copy. Here, I thought I was going crazy. There you go. Okay, so this is our third goal. So we'll go ahead and put goal three. 
which in the problem is the expansion should include approximately five small rooms, 10 medium, and approximately 25,000 square feet. All right, so based on this one, again, we're gonna do the same thing that we did in the second goal. We're gonna have this reference to our orange under for large rooms. Have that equal to zero. Have this be our blue. And have this be our red. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and change this to zero. And since we're looking at, we want to have at least five small and 10 medium rooms, we'll go ahead and put the weight for under for both of those room options. And then for the square footage, since we're looking at approximation, we want to be as close to 25,000 square feet as possible. So for this one, we're gonna actually put a weight for under, being under and being over, okay? So now we'll go back to solver, add a constraint. Okay, and solve. Okay, so if you notice right here, this is our total percent deviation. And something that's interesting is, well, first off, there's this, but we won't worry about that right now. Um, this just means that because we have so many goals going on at the same time, we can't have that 0% um, deviation. This is the smallest percent deviation by having total of five, five rooms for the small, five, seven, and 15 rooms with a total of 2,300 square feet. So this is where that deviation comes from. We have about an 8% right there. And then a 30. Yeah. Um, because we wanted to have 10 rooms, we have a deviation right there as well. So that's what our model looks like. And if you actually come to the slides, um, Professor Sylvia has walked through this whole problem for you guys as well. So we are done with this. If you have any other questions, feel free to let um, any of us TAs know or Sylvia or Professor Sylvia. He will, uh, we will all be willing to help if you have any questions. All right, so thank you so much and we will talk to you later, bye. Maybe not. There it is.